Hey everyone, this is part two of our Night Sky HDRI series, and in this one we're going to be making the Aurora Borealis. Before I get started, I just want to let you know that you can pick up these node setups over on my Gumroad for a dollar, which includes the Galaxy HDRI that will be in the third video. They're packaged in a way so that you can just plug them in and go, without tweaking any settings. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender 2.82, and I just have my scene that I work with for HDRI setups, so I'm just going to switch over to the shading tab here. Make sure we're in render view and we're using EV, EV for this, but this works in cycles also. And just make sure that use nodes is checked up here. So first thing we're going to do is set up our stars, just like before with a Musgrave texture. I'm going to run through this a little quicker because we did this in the last video. Okay, so now that we have these stars set up, I'm just going to move these to the side and lay down a mix RGB and set this to add. So now what we plug into the second one is just gonna be added to our stars. First, what we're going to do is separate the top and the bottom part of the sky. And the way we're gonna do that is with a mapping node. I'm just gonna hook that up, bring in a uh, separate XYZ, and we're gonna be using the, the Z for this because that's up and down if we preview it right here. And so I'm going to bring in another mix RGB and use it like a mask. So we're going to be feeding this into the factor. And just to visualize, I'm going to change the first one to black and the second one to white. And it should look exactly the way it did before. We're just going to plug that into this uh, slot right here and preview everything. So now we have stars, except the top is white here. And that's where our uh, like wavy Aurora lines are going to go. So for those wavy lines, I'm actually just going to add a wave texture and uh, another mapping node, just going to duplicate that and hook this up here. I'm going to plug this in and then I'm going to preview it. So we have these lines, but they're kind of going in like a weird direction. So I'm basically just going to zero out some of these scales. That way, if we look from the front, it's, uh, it's just going up and down. And I'm just going to turn the scale down to two right now, just so there are fewer lines. Okay, next I'm going to move these forward a little, and I'm going to add a noise texture and another mapping. And we're going to use this to distort our wave texture. And just like in my other video about distortion, we're going to use the same technique. So I'm going to add a combine XYZ and I'm going to bring out a uh, math node set to multiply. And we're going to use this to uh, move the location. So when we plug this into X, you can see it's going to start distorting that, that texture all over the place. But we only want it to distort on one axis. So we're going to zero out all these scales because I think those are copied from the mapping node I duplicated. And we're just going to zero all these out except for the Y. And so now it's wavy, but only along one axis. And I'm just going to turn the detail all the way down so it's smooth. And I'm going to set this to 3. And I'm just going to leave the multiply at 1. But you can basically use this to change the, the strength of the, the waves. OK, and with that, let's just plug this into the white section right here and preview everything. And so right now, that looks a little too light. And we don't want it that way. So what we're going to do is add in another math node set to power. And you'll see how this works. So one is basically uh, no difference at all. And when you turn it up, it's going to make the transition more gradual and kind of just push the black in. Um, and if you go the opposite way, then it'll expand until it's like crisp lines right here. And I want it to be even smoother. so. I found that the RGB curves node uh, works pretty good for that. And you can basically just uh, make a curve that looks like this. I'm going to set this back to 1 so just so we can see what it looks like when we're doing that. So you can see as we do this, these lines become bright in the middle, and the fall off is like very smooth. So it's kind of like pointy in the middle, if that makes any sense. Whereas like if you're using a color ramp node set to ease, it would be more like um, the curve would look more like this, where it's like smooth in, most harsh in the middle, and then smooth on its way out. So then we can basically just use this to control how thick the lines are. 
So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And so now we want to give these lines some color. And the way we're going to do that is with another mix RGB node. We're basically just going to use all of this uh, minus the stars as uh, another mask. So we're just going to duplicate this, put it through here. And now we can basically just change these colors. So this would be like the dark part of our sky. Um, and this white would be the color of our lines. And I don't want it to be just one color. I want it to be uh, two different colors. So the easiest way to do that is with a color ramp node. Basically, just plug the factor from the noise texture into here, and then plug the other end into the white portion of the mix RGB. And now if you change these colors, the lines will change color also. So I'm just going to change one to blue and one to green, like that. And this is what we have. Another way to do this without a color ramp is with another mix RGB and uh, map range. You can just plug the noise texture into the map range, and then this into the, the factor. And then these two colors will control the, the colors of your, of your lines. And you can basically just plug these in where we did before. And get that out of there. And we have the same thing, only now we can uh, have a little more control by adding a value node and a math node set to add. We can just plug these into the from min and from max like that. And I'm just going to set add to 1. So basically, the from min and the from max are always going to be this distance apart. If I set this to 0, you can make the fall off. Uh, I mean, you can make these colors a little closer or further apart. If you want it to be smoother, you can do that. Or more harsh, you could set this to like 0.1, and you'll see once we get closer to the middle, it's pretty hard, hard edge. So we're just going to leave it right here, though. I also like to give these lines a little more detail, and the way we do that is actually just duplicating our noise texture. I'm going to duplicate the multiply as well. And these are just going to use the same mapping coordinate. And I'm just going to plug the second one into the Y. And so it looks a little more distorted now. Basically, we're just going to turn the detail all the way up. And you can see that we get these like shimmery edges. I'm just going to turn the multiply down because we want it to be kind of subtle. I'm just going to set it to 0.5 because that seems like it gives the result that I'm looking for. And as you can see, when I move uh, the multiply up and down, it pushes them to one side. And if you don't want that to happen, you can move these back and put another math node in between. Just set to um, subtract. Uh, and it should subtract 0 0.05. And as you can see, they start distorting, but from like a center point instead of just pushing everything to one side. Um, and the reason that works is because this noise texture outputs values that are that go from 0 to 1. And so, OK, let's go back to preview. I'm actually going to come over to our wave texture and make set that to 1 to, just to make it uh, make fewer lines. Next, I want to add some glow to the sky, and that's pretty easy. Basically, we can just duplicate all of this and plug the Z from our separate XYZ in. And so that will make, um, oh yeah, we have to plug this in here too. So now these two colors will control the top and the bottom of the sky. So the bottom, we just want black still. And the top, I want almost black, but I'm just going to keep it blue and um, make it very dark. It kind of just makes it look like these are glowing. And I suggest you make this color be the same as one of these colors. But it really could be anything. And also, if you want to make these lines come down further, all you have to do is change the Z location before your separate XYZ. You can also change the, the smoothness of that transition with a math node set to multiply. I'm just going to take both of these and put this in between right there. So if you turn this up really high, you can see the edge becomes very crisp. And obviously, that's not really what you want. Um, by default, it's set to 1. Um, but if you wanted it to be even smoother, you could turn this down lower, like 0.25 or something like that, and then uh, change the, the Z location so that the bands can come down further. 
This really depends on what kind of um, reflections you're trying to get. I'm just going to change these back. And now you're probably wondering why these aren't moving and how to do that. So the easiest way I found, which also makes these loopable, is pretty much just animating this uh, rotation value that's before the noise textures. When I move this up and down, they start moving. And so if you want this to loop, basically all you have to do is go to the beginning of your timeline and insert a keyframe for the X rotation, and then go to your last frame, which in this case is 250, and change this to 360. Insert another keyframe, make sure this is selected so you can see those, and then I'm just going to change these to linear. And when we do this, you'll see they move pretty fast. So if you do want it to loop, I would just recommend adding more frames here so that it takes longer for this full rotation to happen. Another thing that I really like to do, it's not a looping technique, is you can just type uh, this pound sign and then frame in here. And then this matches the frames. Uh, so when this is set to like 50, uh, the value here is is uh, 50 radians, I believe. And as you can see, when we play it, it's way too fast. But you can actually come in here and do math with it. So I'm just going to divide it by 200. And now you can see it's nice and smooth. And this is nice because you don't have to put any keyframes too. So I really like that. And I think this one influences the, the lighting in our scene pretty nicely, and it makes for a pretty cool backdrop too. But if you wanted the stars to be brighter or the aurora to be brighter, um, what you can do is, after your stars, put a multiplication node, and that will control the, the brightness like that. Or you can use that to make the stars weaker, and then you can just use this background node with the strength and just turn that up. And so that will make your aurora brighter without um, making the stars too bright. You just have to make sure that everything after this multiply node is not clamped, because if you clamp it, it'll stop things from getting uh, brighter than a value of 1. You can see we crank this up really high. I'm just going to turn this back to 1. So now our stars are really bright. And if we set this to clamp, it's it's just going to knock them back down to a value of 1. So just make sure it's not clamped. And then if you want to package this up nicely just to make it a little neater, you can take all the nodes that make up the stars and press Control g to group them. And then take all your nodes that make up the aurora and do the same with that. If you'd like a tutorial on how to make nice looking node groups, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm not going to go into that in this video just because it'll make the tutorial quite a bit longer. Okay, that's it for this video. If you want to see the Galaxy HDRI before the next video, check it out on Gumroad. Consider subscribing if you want to see the last video in this series. And if you want to see what else I'm doing, check out my Instagram. I've been doing a lot of looping animations over there lately. Links for everything are in the description. I hope you learned something and thank you all for watching.